I've been reading a lot of manga. For whatever reason, sitting down to watch a show and focus all my attention on it has been really difficult for me, to the point of me missing out on shows I've been really interested in watching. But at least when it comes to watching anime, there's always a manga that came before. It's much easier to just flick on my phone and start reading. I can go at my own pace and stop whenever, and I can get most reading done into one place and free! The shower! I started reading a lot of shonen, catching up with One Piece, Jojo, My Hero Academia, but after a while I started getting pretty burnt out on the genre. A lot of it tends to be extremely similar in terms of characters and problem solving, the old So I started moving to less combat based manga, dipping into different genres, horror, mystery, slice of life. By the way, I highly recommend Spy X Family, pretty much anything by Junji Ito, and Mashal. It's like if Harry Potter was good! Recently there's been a slice of life anime that's been soaring in popularity, but maybe for the wrong reasons. Uzaki-chan Wants to Hang Out was the talk of the town for a few weeks after its anime released. A very... aggressive talk, might I add. So in the midst of all this discourse, I decided to give the manga a shot, see what all the hubbub was about. And what I got was some unbelievably slightly above average fun. Honestly, I enjoy what I've read so far. Maybe I'm just a sucker for characters and their stories, but I was really charmed by it. The characters aren't groundbreakingly deep in the slightest, but they don't really need to be. I like both the main characters, and the setting is kind of relatable for me as someone who moved out last year for university. You get the idea that despite their reactions to some of the antics, both of the characters really care about each other, and their relationship is much more than just yelling and laughing. I think the series has a good balance of its romantic aspects. As someone who isn't exactly a fan of romance-centric stories, I feel the relationship between Uzaki and Shinichi is really sweet, and it foregoes the whole will they won't they conflict, and more leads us into being more invested in how they come together. I mean, they both clearly like each other, and even the rest of the cast are trying to get them together. We know they'll eventually happen, but the fun and excitement comes from that journey. I haven't actually seen anyone talking about any of the other characters or the personalities of any of the characters. Outside of like a clip of the show, fan art of Uzaki is everywhere, but nothing other than just her and her Sugoi Dekai shirt and a smug smile. And why was there so much commotion for a show that's far from perfect, but also quite charming? Well, it's a mix of things that all relate to one another in some shape or form, but a good place to start is with the focus around her design. She's got huge boobs. I mean some serious hunkers. A real set of badonkers. Packing some Doban hunkeros. Massive da hunka bankaloos. Big ol' tan hangera kugi. A couple people pointed out that they felt from what they'd seen that Uzaki looks like a child and not her actual age, that her design resembled that of a sexualized child. And in my completely worthless opinion, Going off the actual images they're commenting on, yeah, you can understand that some people might think she's just a kid with huge boobs stapled on. Honestly, looking at the transition from manga to anime, they did make her look like that. I'm not sure if on purpose or not. And it's not just her body, the proportions on her face have changed too. And stop staring at me with them big old eyes! In the manga, I would not say she looked like a child. In a way, she sort of looks like a different character even. But even there, characters within it mistake her for being like 5 years younger than she actually is. Nonetheless, this prompted another discussion regarding sexualization, mainly within anime. And much like with every time people try and discuss sexualization with one another, it all went in one ear and out the other, down the drain and out the brain. The thing with sexualization is that it's a nuanced issue, which makes it difficult to talk about on a platform like Twitter that encourages a short snappy statement on whatever you're talking about. Shorthand is rampant on there, tweets like why are men and every dumb tweet about SJWs get both a lot of positive and negative attention, and why people so often generalise and strawman each other. It's one of those things that people can't talk about without discussing the roots of each other's points. I feel like criticism of line, and not just of sexualization, has become very difficult for people because of this, and also the fact that everyone treats it like a game or war with sides. There is no winning here, that's not how a debate or an argument works. The end result is supposed to be getting people to understand your point of view, or coming to some sort of compromise. I myself have tried to comment on socks. Socks? I myself have tried to comment on sexualization, and I honestly failed because people chose to strawman me, and because I tried to approach it in a format that doesn't allow for nuance or flexibility within discussion. 
people are much more focused on trying to get one up on each other rather than have actual discussion, pushing aside criticism for petty squabbles and ad hominem attacks. So, how does this relate to Izaki chan? Well, like I said, the discussion was prompted and as a result there was just more outrage. Genuine criticism about Japan having an issue of sexualizing minors in their media was dismissed as SJW thinks sexy bad. I want to reiterate that these discussions require nuance, okay? Remember the word. Nuance. Nuance. Also, let me preface this by saying I love big titties and butts so that no one tries to call me a prude for criticising. This comic by at Wendy is your friendly pretty much sums up my feelings. Fan service has existed for decades, and sexualization for the sake of it has been used to demean women and stigmatise against other body types. A trend started and perpetuated by industry men. Male gaze theory is something we'll probably learn about in a film and media class, but people can be really dismissive of it for no substantial reason. Calling something unrealistic doesn't mean it's impossible. It's more as a statement to the expectation of women to look a certain way. I have friends who look like this, it's not meant to dismiss people like that. And as an addition to the previous point, it isn't always the result of fan service. There are times where sexualization is done because the artist is expressing part of themselves, something they enjoy, or relevant to the character or themes of a piece of media. Criticisms like these are best directed toward mainstream professional media rather than independent artists who just want to draw big titty. I think there is definitely a time and place for fan service. If it's appropriate, there's nothing wrong I'd say. It should be like a side dish to the media you're consuming. Sometimes it can really take you out of it though, even when it's not sexualization. I remember when Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric wanted to hype people up by including Shadow, but it comes out of nowhere and messes with the game's flow. I think the fan service in Uzaki is generally appropriate. Sometimes it gets out of hand, but I'm fine with it as a standalone thing. But of course, going back to the discourse, the sexualization conversation didn't really last too long, other than a few redraws and retweets. The outrage was short-lived and not really prevalent, but people still keep talking about it and making videos about how they're epic master baiters and pissing off Twitter. Well, here's the thing. This outrage? This epic war against those re bastard SJWs? It's all manufactured. Take a sit, dick, I'm about to blow your mind with the biggest conspiracy theory of the century. How does one manufacture controversy in the first place? It's simple, really. You find like one bothered tweet, apply that person's mindset to a group, pretend to call them out, talk about how triggered they are, people get sick of hearing about it, people complain, they talk more about it, and so on and on and on, and suddenly there's this huge wave of people who are supposedly outraged. Voila! You've created an army of imaginary strawmen for you, the persecuted critic, and your supporters to fight against. Ergo, you have the perfect loop of discourse because it becomes my side versus your side, and none of the people on these sides listen to each other, so they generate even more chaos. You add coal to the controversy train and you get to report on how fast the train keeps going. I think the most annoying part of this fake controversy is what it's done to the actual show. Like, as someone who's a fan of it, seeing smug anime profile picture Twitter co-opting it has been exhausting. They see big old titties and a smug smile and that's all the character is now. It's flanderization to the nth degree. She's more than just boobs and a smile. Your IQs just aren't high enough to understand the complexity of her character. <laughs> but to be real, she really has been flanderized. Like, all these drawings about her laughing at these straw men are kind of out of character. Like, she's not this hyper-aggressive bully that everyone is making her out to be. She just likes to spend time with Shinichi and keeps him company because she cares about and worries for him. And that's... <laughs> so sweet. Honestly, I think people are just seeing her smug face and just applying all of Nagatoro's characteristics to her. Nagatoro is from a similar manga where a loner nerd gets bullied by a girl and they develop a friendship. Not gonna get into it, but I think there are some pretty key differences between the two, and while I have my fair share of problems with Nagatoro, I still enjoy that too. Listen, I'm just too emotional for my own good, I just want them to draw animals together! Honestly, any discussion of character moments or literally anything else about Uzaki-chan other than Uzaki and her bootleg Supreme shirt is kind of lost in this sea of fake outrage. I think people could really learn from taking a moment to reflect on themselves for a bit when discussing things with people they disagree with. People have a very reductionist way of dismissing things people should really talk about. Like I've said, the world isn't black and white, it does you good to hear people out. If you want to know more about the fake outrage, I'd recommend watching Silly Rally's video on some of the people talking about Uzaki. 
is pretty good and sums it all up nicely. Also, let's be honest, we all really want to get our hands on that pair of cats. <gasps> two black cats! I got two black cats too! Watch the show if you want, it's nice. Hey, this video's like six months late. It's also late where I am now, so I'll keep this brief. You should follow my Twitter if you want to know what's going on with everything regarding videos. I'm just gonna keep it, just do what I want really. Just keep it chill, make videos, well, put them out when they're ready. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, if you liked the video, you can do all the things that YouTubers tell you to do. And you can check out the people who are better than me tab on my channel. I also have a Discord you can join. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye.